President Mohamed Buhari on Monday in Abuja met behind closed door with security chiefs at the presidential villa Abuja. The meeting came barely 24 hours after the president vowed to launch aggressive campaigns against the insurgents operating in the country. President Buhari had on Sunday while reacting to the attack on Gakida in Adamawa assured Nigerians that in the coming weeks they would witness an aggressive campaign to root Boko Haram once and for all. The president has said that security agencies would continue to be well-funded and appealed to Nigerians to continue to support the security personnel in their gallant efforts to protect the citizens and secure the country. The Monday security meeting with the president was attended by all the four service chiefs, namely Chief of Defense Staff, General Abayomi Olunisaki, Chief of Abbey Staff, Lieutenant General Takobura Tai, Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, and Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ete Ekwe Ibas, as well as the Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu. With me in the studio to have a look at this is Leonard Ebute, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Felicity. It's a pleasure to have you. Aggressive campaign to root out Boko Haram. Is this possible this time? Should we believe him? And we, we need to believe him. We want to believe him, right? Even though the history does not suggest that this government deserves our confidence as it relates to um, security. But you, if you take away hope from the equation, then you add hopelessness of the masses to this situation, it becomes an inferno that will burn, all, burn us all down. For our sakes, I really pray and hope that um, Buhari can take himself seriously and maybe take us seriously this time. But so you're basically saying we don't have an option but to believe. We him. have to, we need to. What are the options? The options are, it's just anarchy, you know, because um, it's Boko Haram today, it's gradually dissipating, it's kidnapping all over the places, it's well, Yahoo boys all over the places. Considering the antecedents of, you know, technically defeated, defeated, fringes of um, uh, Sambisa Forest, you know, all the terminologies that has been used over the years, do you think that that trust is strong enough for the people to say, okay, let me believe the president? I won't come on national TV and be an ambassador of hopelessness, right? Even though the history suggests that Pronouncements have been made that were deliberate falsehoods. We've defeated them, we've done this, we've done that, and so on. Those were deliberate falsehoods. And, but some of us, we make the allowance between political statements aimed at just keeping a balance, right? Uh, we make that distinction between those kinds of things. But if in your second tenure, into the first year of your second tenure, you call or a meeting of all the people in the land that can make it happen. And then you come out to say, this is what you want to do. My impulse is to say, please, let's give this guy the 15th chance, the 20th chance. It's better than no chance. And that's the message I want Nigerians to, to hear, a message of hope, even in a failing government, a message, a message of belief that probably the prayers we pray to God Answers are coming. <laughs> well, somebody has said prayer is not a strategy. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the service chiefs that are at the meeting with him are the same ones that people are clamoring for them to step aside. What's, what, what side of the divide are you? Oh, quite clearly, these ones have di displayed crass incompetence. There is no nice way to put it. They need to go. They are done. They are, they are, they are done. But will it solve the problem? They are going. Yes. It, it can't be much worse, okay? So if the status quo isn't solving the problem, you have to make a change and hope that that change will bring solution. Already it is clear that the guys there, maybe they are demotivated, maybe they are old, maybe they have nothing to offer again. They are, they, they are living on borrowed time, literally, and there is no energy to put in that extra work. So I, I agree with the clamor for their removal. I am shocked that they have not resigned because it is a display of disrespect for their uniforms that you can't do a job, you have outgrown the job, and you are perpetuating yourself seemingly in office, which is it's, it's really despicable in my opinion. If I let you go, I need to take you up on the issue of hope. You keep talking about hope. In this instance, what would solidify that hope for the people? What actions, 
in, in your opinion, should the government take, aside from meeting with the service chiefs, to reinstill and uplift that hope in people? The Nigerian Armed Forces is around 200,000 men and officers, right? Boko Haram is maybe 30,000 people. We have numbers on our side. We have the power of state on our side. The average Nigerian soldier is a brave lion that has proven his ability on the battlefield across Africa. We're not talking about a military that is lacking in anything except motivation, except the desire to put nation first, which is not coming from the top. We are talking about a proven military here. There is no doubt about the capabilities of the average soldier in the field. Harnessing that capability and putting it to work is what is missing. Funding the logistics of the men on the battleground is what has been missing. Stealing from the coffers from which they should be fed is what has been the status quo. And if all this goes away, those guys in the field, those soldiers that you see, the same uniform that my father wore and nearly every the family in my village war. That uniform is sufficient in the face of adversary to, 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 to display the Nigerian spirit. Thank you very much for your thoughts on Thank the you. news. Thank you.